Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Sunny, your host. Today we are going to learn more uh, about fast API. So we are going to today explore about API routers. Okay. So till now, uh, whatever application we have seen, this just one main.py application, and we used to keep all our fast API code there. But uh, now we will see some more modular approach. Okay, where we are going to use API routers. And in order to do that, I will be creating one uh, simple ML application, okay, where uh, like I'll be using this Iris data set. I know like uh, we are taking very simple uh, data set as of now because our main focus is on fast API, not on the ML application building, okay? So I just wanted to uh, tell you about that, what uh, like mainly I want to focus on the concept part of it, okay? especially the fast API concepts. So uh, yeah, so let's start with that. So first of all, what I will do is I will show you a regular way of doing it, like just really quick. I will show you one um, like old way or the regular way that you are aware of. And then after that, I will convert them into a API routes. Okay, so let's start with this. So uh, yeah, before doing, uh, before proceeding further, I will show you one diagram, like what we are going to build. So this is called as a, like this is a sequence diagram, okay? Where uh, we have, as you can see on the uh, uh, on this diagram, we have three uh, things. That is one is client, then we have fast API, and then we have our like model. That is the model means like here the train model. So what is happening is that these, this, uh, this connection will happen between these, uh, these three things only, right? So client, nothing much like it's us, like it's the user that's going to be fast API is our application and then the model that we are going to train. That is the third thing. So here, uh, so first thing what will happen is that we will, uh, in this application, we are going to send a post request to our fast API with a uh, CSV file, okay, or a training CSV file. So what will happen like based on that CSV file, our model will be trained, okay. And once that is done, we will save our model, okay, that is save the model path. That is thing and then after that once this is successful or once the training is complete what we will do we will send a response that training was successful so that is our first uh, train route that is what he has explained here slash train then we will also have a other route that is going to be a prediction route or prediction endpoint so what we are going to send is we are going to send our uh, like input data for the prediction so that will be again a post request on predict route. So what it will do, it will uh, predict with input data, it will go to our model first. And then after that, it will simply return, it can return two types of response, okay? Let's say if the return was, uh, if the model was loaded properly, so it will send you uh, this route, that is, uh, uh, it will simply return the prediction and it will give you the response at the end. Otherwise, if there is an error, so it will simply say that model not loaded, okay? So that will be your, uh, that will be your like error response. Okay. So this is what we are going to build quickly. So I hope you have got the quick overview. Okay. So let's go to, let's create here, uh, first of all, train.py, like which will be used for uh, training the application. And before that, we also need the requirements. Okay. So in the requirements, you, uh, you will need a few more. So we will need pandas, we will need scikit-learn and Seaborn and Matplotlib for the visualization purpose. Okay, so let's go to the train.py now. And also before that, you should install these into your, uh, uh, this requirement into your virtual environment. So as you can see the virtual environment, I'm using the same one that we had previously. And since we have modified this requirements.txt, so I should run a pip install requirements.txt. Okay, hyphen r requirements.txt. And if you run this command, so it will be simply installing it. So since I have already installed it, so it will it is saying that a requirement is already satisfied. Okay. So yeah, so once it is done, so now we are ready to write our train.py file. So I already have written the code. I think you most of you who are watching this are already familiar with the machine learning concept, at least the basic ones. So you can see that what I'm doing here is I have just uploaded, like I have just imported the bunch of libraries which is required. And then uh, we are reading the iris.csv file, which is present here. Okay, this is a very common hello world kind of data in machine learning. And then what I'm doing is I'm just extracting the uh, x that is the uh, dependent and independent variables. So this is the independent variable that is x. And then we have like I'm leaving the last column that is the species column. Okay, that's where that's what we are going to classify, right? So 
we are getting x and y and then what i'm doing is i'm using this x and y to uh, split the data into train and test sets okay then i'm applying random forest classifier model and then i'm fitting the model onto x train and y train values right so this will give us the um, like the model and then we're using this model to uh, like test uh, like get the prediction on the x test and i'm using this prediction and y test to check the accuracy score i'm also checking the f1 score and also we are creating the confusion matrix okay using the y test and prediction and once that is done so we will be uh, creating a plot and we will be saving at confusion matrix.png okay once it is done so we will be uh, saving our model and we will also like simply at the end we will also print it out that uh, this is the accuracy score and this is the f1 score whatever is it okay so let's run this quickly we'll simply say python then uh, train dot py once it is done you can see it has uh, printed the score at the end right and let's check the confusion matrix so as you can see this is the confusion matrix it created okay so it seems well right like uh, i i would say that it's, it's perfect one okay yeah good for a demo yeah so so this is train.py i think we are all familiar with this so i will not spend much time and also there are comments written here so that you can uh, have a look later on okay uh, next, and, and you can see that it has also saved the model here, irismodel.joblib. So that is where we have used joblib library and it is being saved here. Okay. So this is the train.py. Let's go back to quickly to the, uh, let's create another file, which is going to be predict.py. Uh, so predict.py, what it will do is uh, have a code again for this. So what I will do is I will simply import joblib. Okay. And I will load the model that we have. Then it will also print that the model is loaded and then we will do the uh, we will pass a sample data like this x test okay we will have two endpoint two data points here and we will see the predictions at the end okay it's very plain and simple let's try to run this yep as you can see it model was loaded it is printed and then it has printed the uh, predictions for it okay so this is our train and predict method and now let's try to write a, uh, your app or fast api application so these are the imports that i'm going to use here especially the uh, these are the, i think you are aware that it's just a path import and then we have typing any for let's say if you want to annotate for unknown type okay then we are going to import the same that we had earlier here we will see the some something new that is upload file option okay and this file type and then the rest of the things as tp exception and status is remain same then we have json response we have pyrentic from base uh, model this is for our uh, pyrentic validation use case and then we have pandas for importing and so on okay so let's create the app first of all fast api app okay and yeah now let's try to define the model path okay so model path we will be defining and also we will be defining the path to uh, the confusion matrix that we are going to store here then we will define a class let's call this as a prediction input or we will do this later let's try to first of all create first endpoint that is the uh, train endpoint app dot post request and this will be train route okay and then we will have a sync define train model here we are going to upload the file so it will be this upload file class and of type and then we'll have this value of file and it this three ellipses is passed that means it is a mandatory input okay and then we will yeah well let's have a try and exception block here now so uh, in this block we will be writing our train code okay so let's copy paste the train code from here okay so let's take care of the indentation now here we uh, since the file is being uploaded right so this will come from file this argument okay and then file dot file so it will help you to get the uh, csv file path and then it will help you to read this okay we can get rid of this print statement let's not use it as of now and i think rest of the things will remain same there's not going to be any change except here so like you can see that we are trying to save uh, these files right so I want you to use these variables which are here. Okay, so model path will be replaced here so that we can change it very easily as per our requirement. So I'm keeping it on the top. Okay, 
Apart from this, now, uh, since uh, once the model is trained, so we should be re returning a response, right? JSON response. So we will return a JSON response and this will be containing this value. Content is equals to, let's say you want to pass this message and then you can also mention the status code. So status code is going to be status dot HTTP 200 OK. And in case of exception, so it will raise a HTTP exception okay and here the status code will be is equals to http 400 bad request and then we will send the uh the detail here so detail will be is equals to string of this exception yeah so i forgot a comma here so let me apply that yeah so this is fine now okay so i think let's try to run this first so let's try to say uh so for this why we'll run fast api dev and then main.py Okay, so let's quickly run this okay so as you can see we have the uh, train route ready so once you open this it's a post request and if you click on try it out so it is allowing you to do the do so okay so now let's try to uh, upload your file here so if you click on choose file we'll open your let's select the iris.csv and then once you execute it if everything is fine so you can see it said that model trained successfully with the accuracy score 1.0 and then f1 score is one also so that means the that, that this worked right now let me minimize it and then let's go back again here yeah so we have just successfully created the train route and now let's do the same for the prediction route okay so just like that we will try to create the prediction route yeah as and one more thing here if you can see in train dot model so uh, the response type will be json response right so we can simply return the json response here okay like we can say this way i mean this just for the including the type hint here so just like that let's try to create the prediction route predict and then we will be having the data type as now here we need to specify the data type so for this we will create a pyrending model okay so let's create it here we will say that class prediction input will inherit the base model and then it will have the data of type so what we are expecting is like if you uh, observe this iris.csv see we have these four inputs right separate length width and then pedal length and width okay so we are going to uh, so the input will look like uh, it will be a list of a list of uh, four float values okay well, i mean so like that so if you want to send a batch input so it should be a list of lists okay now but we want to specify that it is going to be only four values right so that is why what we are going to do is we will say that list of we will say tuple okay and we will specify that all of these tuple will be of type float okay so we will have four float values so we need to specify that okay so this is going to be the prediction input type so we will specify this here whenever you will be getting the data and here also the output will be json response okay so i'm specifying it right now and now uh, we will upload the model here so model is equals to uh, joblib dot load the model file path using that and then let's keep it into the try and accept block so we will copy the same exception here which is this and now go to the predict.py that we had okay so you can see it has loaded the model and then after that we have got the data and we have made the prediction let's copy paste it here so since we are getting the data already here so we will change that and we will also convert them into numpy array okay and we will have the data dot data i mean if you just look at it so it's the data here right so we are calling the same here data dot data that will be your x test value or the that should be actually input value if you want to keep it x test that is up to you but if you want to change them so let's call it as input data okay so we have got the prediction so instead of printing it we will be sending it to the outcome okay so we will just simply say that return json response with status code of same as here and it will contain the content here so content will be a message and that will say predictions and it will be predictions and then we need to convert that into a list because it is going to be a numpy array so let's convert that into a list because otherwise if you send a try to send the numpy array here so this will give an error because it's a json response and a numpy array is not jsonifiable or not you will not be able to json like will not be able to convert into that format okay so it's better you convert that into a list and that is easily sendable as a json response 
so yeah so this is uh, contains the predict route let's go to our api really quick if you just refresh it so you should see the predict route and yeah let's try it out and if you so you can see that it is already giving you this four input right so let's say we want to use value let's say 0.1 let's put 0.1 in all if you try to execute it everything is fine so we should get a response yeah so response is prediction is setosa now let's say if you want to uh, just do a batch testing so you can just copy this data point paste it again and let's call this as uh, maybe 6.1 okay all it can be another, any other value you can test it for your own okay i'm just testing with some random value just to show you that it works so if i execute it so you can see the other uh, type is virginica that means it works right this endpoint also works so by this time like we have just simply implemented quickly the uh, you know the regular uh, fast api application okay but the thing is like if you can see that it has already grown long to like it, i have we have written till 95 lines of code right so but let's say if your application is more complex so you will uh, you will end up like in writing a lot of uh, code into this just main.py right so it should be uh, in order to deal with that there is a requirement of like writing this modular in a modular fashion right so we can what we will do is we will break this application into two routers one will be train train another one will be the predict so for that what we will do is um, what i can do is right now uh, i will move all the uh, this files the old files into our a new directory we will call this as old way okay let's move our main.py and everything okay so now let's do one thing let's create again the main.py file let's call it as main v2.py so that you guys can differentiate then what we will do we will create a folder uh routers you can give it any name i'm just giving it routers now in this one we will create a train.py router then we will have a another one is predict.py okay and now what we will do is we will uh, just go to the previous code main.py just copy everything let's go to train.py yeah since we only want to keep the train.py here so we will just get rid of the rest of the methods here okay or the function which is not required so we will get rid of prediction part and again we will try to copy the uh, same main.py into the predict route but we will get rid of the train part from here okay we don't need that yeah so you must be thinking that why we have this again the fast api twice so we will again change few things so in the train.py let's go back here uh, instead of having this fast api we will from line number two as you can see we will import api router and we will replace fast api class with api router and we will change this app as well instead of calling it this app we will call it as router okay the rest of the things will remain same there's not going to be change and then in the predict.py also we will do the something similar now in the main.py we will import from fast api we will import fast api class here and then from the routers we will import train and predict okay and then we will create here app is equals to again the same fast api class we will initiate and now after this we will simply say include router and here we will specify the train dot router and just like that we will also include the predict route okay now let's try to run this since it's main uh, fast api dev main v2.py we let's try to run this and if everything is fine so we will if you refresh it so you will see the same thing is here right and if you try to test it out so it will give you the same kind of response but before we do that we will let's make some more changes so if you observe here so it's it, here it is written as default right so if you want to specify a different tag so let's add tag as well so what we will do is we will go to our routers okay and then here we can simply specify and specify tags let's say if you want to group something some similar kind of routes together so we can give them tags so i'm calling it as a train router just like that okay i'm sorry it's a predict one right so it's a predict router or route and here we will have train okay 
I think it started. So let's go back to our and let's try to refresh it. So you can see we have train route and predict route. So let's say if you have some more bunch of endpoints into the under the train route, so it will look separate and similarly predict route will look separate. Okay. So this is another way to tag your routes. Okay. Next is yeah, let's do some bunch of more modification and then we are done with this application. So let's create another folder called as artifacts where we will be storing all our artifacts. Okay, let's say we are uh, even our data set as well. Let's keep it into artifacts folder. So I will copy it from here and we will also be saving our model into that. Okay, in the artifacts only. And let's also create in the routers since if you see here in predict also we have this uh, model file path and in the train also we have these model file path. So instead of keeping them in separate way, so let's create a config file which will be keeping all this configuration at one place. So config.py. So here we will create a wave import path and we will create a class called as config which will store these configurations okay so we will let's copy it from here and we want to store all these things into our artifacts right so we will call it as artifacts forward slash this the value that we have okay so now we have both the values available here and then what we will do we will say simply from dot config import the config class and wherever we have mentioned model file path we will simply say config dot model uh, file path and we can get rid of this top value from here and just like that we will do it for the train as well so we will simply import from dot config import config class and then wherever you see model file path you can replace it with config dot model file path and similarly for the confusion matrix file path as well okay and we can get rid of this global values right and i think this one extra import also can be dropped let's see if we have something here yeah we can drop this part yep i think everything is okay now let's try to see the so you can see application has already refreshed so let's go back to our application and let's see everything is if everything is working fine or not so uh yeah first of all let's do one thing with let's try to predict and see if it works out okay let's try it out So you can see it gave the error here already that there is no such file or directory that means it is the model is not yet present right so that's the error we have got okay bad request so what we should do first of all we have to do the training because that's correct right the input was incorrect so let's try it out and then click on choose file select the csv file let's execute it so it says model trained successfully that means the model has been uh, stored let's go back and really check it so everything should be stored into artifacts right you can see model is saved here iris.csv is already there that is the data and then confusion matrix is also stored here that means everything went well now let's go back and now let's try to do the prediction okay so data is already here let's try to execute this yeah this time you have got the prediction okay so this way we have just simply implemented the routers or api routers into the fast api application okay so you can see that now the main.py is so small right so in this way you can include like you can look into the documentation explore further and now what is the advantage here that we have got so these are the observation that you will uh, find out here so first of all the code will be organized based on the uh, like it can be based on the related routes it can be it can be organized right and then we have the reusability right so in like let's say if you want to reuse some routers so again in some some scenarios it can be used okay so the reusability will be there and then maintainability obviously like say if you are working on a very large application and you are working on a smaller part of it so uh, what you can do is you can again group the logical components or smaller logical components together and uh, so that way it becomes a that way it becomes a maintainable code okay then obviously scalability so let's say if application grows so uh, definitely it will be easily manageable because uh, 
the all routes can have like different routes can be having a single file and can become okay so different routes can have uh, their own file okay so that way it can be scalable as well next is about the uh, flexibility of the routes so you can even add prefix as well okay so that i haven't shown you can explore this but this is another uh, thing that you can do with this next is about uh, we can have the enhanced functionality so we can have let's say every route can have their own dependencies okay so that can be managed into uh, their own routes okay or their own file next let's say if you're working on a, a very big project so definitely this can enhance like it can also bring in some collaboration as well because uh, different teams can work with the different routes simultaneously so without hindering their own uh, without hindering their uh, work okay so these are the benefits of this i have uh, also added some citations which you can look into okay so that's all for this video i hope you have learned something new here and in the upcoming videos we will try to uh, bring in some more concept fast api concept or we will try to also build some more uh, ai application so this was just a start uh, where we have started with this some simple ml application we will also see dl applications and then we will also see the computer vision applications and more okay so see you all till then okay thank you and if you definitely like this uh, if you have liked this video then please definitely share it subscribe it okay thank you all